There are 7 SMGs that your squadmates can use in Mass Effect 3, so which one is the best for them? This video is part of my series where I test the effectiveness of different weapons on squadmates. In my first video on assault rifles, I explained the specific parameters of testing and to avoid repeating myself too much, I will link the video in the description below. To summarize, I went through the Noveria fighter base mission with only my squadmates doing most of the damage and measured not just how long it took them to complete the mission, but also how quickly they could kill the final Atlas. Garrus and Ashley helped us test the effectiveness of assault and sniper rifles, but they cannot join us for this video as they are unable to use SMGs. Instead, we will have to rely on Edie and Liara, characters who were never intended to use their guns as their main source of damage. Unlike Garrus and Ashley, who could passively boost their weapon damage more than twice as much, Liara and Edie can only get a measly 20% increase. In addition to that, Edie does not have an ammo power of her own, so Liara had to share her warp ammo with the squad. The ammo power offered a 37.37% damage boost against health and armor, along with a 25% armor weakening effect. Warp ammo also has a 75% damage boost against targets under the effects of Pyoric abilities, which seems to apply to stasis and warp as well. These effects also carried over to Eevee, but they were halved. Despite their many form pinning outfits that leave little room for imagination, none of them boost their weapon damage. Liara has an outfit that increases her power damage by 25%, which does boost the damage of her warp ammo. Since Liara also had access to stasis, I decided to use it against shielded enemies, as they were the biggest nuisance in the previous tests. Every test was done with a level 5 variant of the weapon, and all of them used a level 5 magazine upgrade and a level 5 high velocity barrel mod. Their ranking and analysis begins now. This one hurts, as the Hornet is my second favorite weapon in the game, but it really is the Argus of SMGs, a weapon so bad in the hands of your squad that it dropped out of testing entirely. While the Hornet is capable of very high DPS, when the player makes full use of the short delay between bursts, this isn't a behavior that your squad utilizes. Instead, they will wait up to 3 seconds before firing their next burst, which makes their DPS with the weapon abysmal. You'd think that a high fire rate, high damage and high recoil gun would fit like a club for your squad, but just when you think you've found something truly special, the game manages to pull you by the wiener. Our sixth spot belongs to a weapon that just barely manages to make it through the testing, and that is the other burst fire SMG, the Shuriken. What brings this weapon down is its inconsistency. The delay between bursts does not seem to be set in stone. You'll sometimes see your squad follow one burst up with another, and then just stare at the target, rather than shooting. Even if the bursts were more consistent, their damage wouldn't be spectacular meaning that the shuriken would have never had an opportunity to shine, even if it wanted to. When compared to the other SMGs, the Locust's only real advantage is the high accuracy and low recoil, something that squadmates never seem to struggle with, even on weapons where those are severe issues. As a result, its otherwise mediocre damage output and a low magazine size of 20 make it quite underwhelming. I also noticed that your squad seems to have issues with firing upon their target at close range. Maybe it's just a friendly AI doing what it does best, disappointing Commander Shepard, but it seemed that the delay between bursts was much longer when the target was only a few meters away. The Locust also has the illustrious honor of having the longest Atlas kill time we've seen in the series, 4 minutes and 35 seconds. The Casa Locust may have killed two presidents, but you'd be lucky if you saw it kill a single trooper with just one mag, much less anything with an armor bar. Coming in at the fourth spot and beating the Locust by over 6 minutes is the Tempest. It has a generous starting mag size of 50 and your friends make good use of that as they fire the weapon in fairly long bursts. 
As long as all shots connect, a single burst will remove around 7 bars of health from a basic trooper. The Tempest behaves a lot like an automatic assault rifle, but with much longer bursts. I could be mistaken, but the Get Plasma SMG might have the highest potential damage per second out of all the SMGs. So why did it only score the third spot? Two reasons. First, it requires a brief spin-up period to reach its maximum fire rate, and second, despite having a whopping 100 rounds in a mag by default, your squad may still feel the need to fire it in rather short bursts. The Mass Effect wiki says that the Plasma SMG is a poor choice for squad mates, but I don't agree with that statement. While they do use the weapon in an awkward manner, not making full use of its fire rate and magazine size, they still manage to do enough damage to be able to kill with a single burst. Even against the Atlas, the weapon performed much better than the low per shot damage would imply. Kind of reminds me of how the Typhoon seems to do far more damage in the hands of squad mates than the player. The N7 Hurricane has a blisteringly high rate of fire that is balanced out by its absurd recoil. As we are undoubtedly aware of by now, squad mates don't seem to suffer from recoil at all, leaving the frequent reloads as the only real downside to this SMG. Your squad doesn't seem to take their fingers off the trigger until the enemy is dead or they deplete their magazine. Since the weapon otherwise has very high damage output and the reloads are the only real issue, I am tempted to do this test again with the Hurricane, running a magazine upgrade and a heatsink, which would potentially give the weapon an effective magazine size of over 100. Our top performer for the test is the Bloodback Punisher, a weapon with a very unique effect. When the weapon is fired continuously for 8 rounds, it fires a special high damage round alongside the usual ones. Normally, this round would cause a tremendous amount of recoil that throws off the player's aim, but Liara's blue noodle arms are apparently strong enough to completely negate that. For your squad, this is just extra damage without any downsides, and when combined with the already higher than average damage, along with the solid fire rate, it should come as no surprise then that the Punisher has made it this far. This special round, in addition to its higher damage, also deals extra damage against armor, and the time it took to kill the Atlas is better than most assault and sniper rifles. The Punisher really does everything you'd want an SMG to do, and then some, all without the very frequent reloads that plague the Hurricane. It's a bit of a shame that Garrus and Ashley can't use SMGs, as it would have been interesting to see how the Punisher would have performed with their very high damage boosts. And these are the final results. When it comes to the top 3 SMGs, I can see them swapping places if the tests were done again. I hope you learned something useful and now know what instruments to use to have your enemies brutally murdered.